I hope you know how to put it back together. It's usually 10 minutes to take it apart and 4 hours to put it back together. Yes. The old folks still do this. We are old folks. I know, that's why we're doing it. Oh my god. In this episode, we're gonna fix the rear brakes of my Land Rover Discovery 3. Hope you enjoy the video. Yes. Well, Christian put it all together here, nice and clean, like an operating table. So Christian ordered me new Brembo brake discs, brake pads, and a new accessory kit. Can we start? Yes. So first step is um, air suspension. I find it easier to lift it from out of off-road height into full height. Some people do that differently. Christian knows what he's talking about. I don't even know what a Toyota is. That is just so cool. Here it is. We want to service also the electric parking brake and in order to do that I got to push basically the brake, hold the handbrake switch down, pull the key out and let the handbrake switch go. This way the parking brake stays open in service mode. I had to do that for five years. Yeah. Okay, the next step is we're going to disable the air suspension like we always do. We want to show that every single time. The reason we disable the air suspension using the fuse and not a switch is that every episode shows how to do it in case we have new viewers who have not seen us doing that before. If we would be using a switch, they would go, well, where the hell is that switch? On my car. Because our jack is so small, I got a bolt in this wooden block, so I have enough reach. And by the way, that is already a pretty big jack. Yes, it's still too small. I have to look for my light. Yeah. I already did it on the left side. And by the way, yes, we are the people who take off the wheels most often. It would be now the second time for today. <laughs> yeah, because we already, I don't know if you guys realize, but this is like an hour after doing the ball joint. So <laughs> we just put those wheels back on for you, okay? Now we take them back off. And so we can watch Vera pumping this up. You got it. I got him higher than Christian does. My head is on this level. When you check up this kind of road height, oh my god. So he's going. Oh. Doing brakes is really easy on a Land Rover. It really is. But there are a couple of things you gotta watch out. So hopefully. This video will be helpful for you. Oh, and then he complains, you, I have two hours of footage I have to watch. Do you pull this wear sensor out right away in the beginning? It just pulls straight back. See? And I always use some silicone glue to glue it in. Yeah, get me a wire tie. You know, clothes hangers. Okay, just before it falls on us, we'll hang this up here. The fastening bolts for the mounting bracket here require a 12-point socket. You got to pay attention to have a 15 millimeter 12-point socket in your toolkit. <coughs> I still need to get another battery. Now you don't want to replace your, your brake pads in the last minute. You can see how they still got like almost a quarter of an inch. This one maybe five millimeters. Your brake caliper is just moving out further and further and it will make this brake cylinder lock up prematurely. You may as well do it a little earlier and that will prolong the life of your brake caliper. Ah, to me they look brand new. No, they absolutely do not look brand new. Oh, oh my God, yes, Okay. I'm really worn out. Do I have a light that comes on? Yes, that's that switch what I just broke. <laughs> ah. Okay, that's a little Torx bolt. Why would we replace the discs? because they are not Brembo. If I measure them now, they are gonna be with intolerance and they would be probably surviving another set of pads. But why would I do that? I wanna have one and the same manufacturer in there and get everything done nice and clean. 
We got these out. And we gotta take those pins out right there. Oh good, I hope we got new pins too. I hope you know how to put it back together. It's usually 10 minutes to take it apart and four hours to put it back together. Yes. Yeah, I dropped the spring. So this thing we're gonna have to, I think, reuse. The easiest way to get the shoe out is taking it out like this and then disengaging the spring. Don't try to get that spring disengaged while the stuff is installed. We're gonna reuse these shoes, okay? So the only reason we take the parking brake cable off is so that we can clean this stuff. See, I disengage this. There's this little latch. And that allows me to take this out. And now I got the shoes just like this here. And we're gonna clean them up and put them right back together. Okay. And down here, there is a piece hanging here with a spring. So that's why we need the accessory package because this one is kind of wasted. Good, we'll clean this up. And you remember who painted this? Yes, I did. Oh, that wheel bearing looks the same like in the front. Yes, this one is a press-in wheel bearing. The front is a complete hub. Oh, do we have a spare? No, the rear is not serviceable on the road. Oh, really? No. Oh, that sucks. We should replace them then before our next bulk but trip. They are new. Like when? Like two years ago, our first video, we did the rear wheel bearings. That's when you, I dropped the punch on your foot. And there's this little mechanism in here, which is quite important to be kind of loose. That's this motion. Oh my God. We want to make sure this motion is nicely moving. And then there is this mechanism here. Yeah. Uh, let's not want to come out. There we go. And what we got to do here on this used brake pad is service this little mechanism here. How? By taking it apart and by cleaning it. Oh my God. That's a very simple little mechanism. See, as soon as I open the screw, this wedge jumps out and that's really important that this wedge is in here and it's all the way over. And you can see how I got copper grease underneath this little wedge piece. And we're gonna clean this and refresh this with copper grease. Yeah. For setting the brake later on when it's in the vehicle, this needs to move really easy. Some copper grease on here goes back in place here. Now tighten this little screw up. That's the screw I can access later on from the outside. And when I now got this thing installed in the vehicle, and I'm at that position, all I got to do is open this screw and look what happens to the wedge then. It jumps forward, mm -hmm. okay? Now I got to clean the brake pads. Yep. And we put them in, I would say, 120,000 kilometers ago. And we cleaned them at least once. They never wear down because obviously it's only a parking brake. Second one. It's like on your mountain bike. And we got the new accessory kit, which is only like 16 euros. So it makes sense to get this, even if you use only a few pieces out of it. It's from Bosch, made in Denmark. So you compare the pieces to make sure they are correct. And now I put it back together. And of course, I forgot how. Yes, I know. How easy they go in. That's what it. What the hell? <laughs> you must have done something wrong. This cable goes through here, yeah. close the latch and put the wire around it to make sure it's not opening. There. It looks not closed. It's, it's not closed, it's just pushing onto this little piece oh here. God. Of course this is how it's supposed to be. Oh my God. I don't like this new style copper grease. What we me too, here. but that's Fabian bought that one, not me. Oh. I want to make sure I don't touch the disc surface now with my copper grease gloves. See, I put this here on these friction surfaces. Yeah, there are several of those. Yeah. Yeah. See here? Yeah. See my hands are now clean again? No. This is where we put a new spring in. It looks just as crooked as the old no, one. No, <laughs> no, it's good. Tie wrap around here to keep the spring in. Now it works like this, see? So now we got the tie wrap on here. So in order to put this in. New pins. New pins here. So I put one of these in. And then I got a new clip here. And these clips can also be a nightmare to get on. 
okay. Now watch the installation sequence here really closely. See, I got this brake shoe already roughly in position. I got this clip mounted and this pin mounted. The closed side of the clip is facing the adjuster wheel on this side of the wheel. Then I got the return spring here inserted. And here down here, the shoe is already seated. See? But the shoe is actually not in the final position. Now, I take this wedge and I insert it in here and make sure it's in all the way. There. Now it gets even more difficult. Now I take the secondary shoe and I put it into the return spring. And now I gotta lift this shoe into position here, wedging it in. And this is really difficult. There's also room for getting hurt. There it's in. See how the spring snapped above here? And this is nicely seated. Now I got to get the spring clip in. So I'm using a long needle nose plier. There. I know this looks easy now, but it's only like the 25th attempt. Now I install the adjuster wheel as it is shown in the manual. There we go. The closed side of the clips must face the adjuster wheel. Now I put the return spring in below the adjuster wheel. I do that using a little hook. And I just get it stretched. And then I push it in with a needle nose plier. There we go. Now it's pretty much seated, but I have to say, I don't like the new clips. The other ones were just much nicer. So let's put the original clip back in here. This one just sucks. I bash this into the nice position here. Now this is all set. Gotta make sure I'm not forgetting this tie wrap here. So we're gonna clean the disc brake. Putting the torque screw back in. And we tighten it to 35 newton meter. Adjust the disc brake. I have to get the inspection hole in front of the adjuster wheel and get me a screwdriver. And the white pen to put a couple of Q-tips in your toolbox. Now comes the procedure to seat the brake shoes. Just like in our last video where I forgot half of it, I gotta <laughs> rotate the inspection hole in front of the adjuster wheel and then I gotta wedge the adjuster wheel until the disc brake locks up. Wrong direction. That's tight. Tight. One click loose. There we go. So now I have exactly the spot where it starts to slip. Now I mark the adjuster wheel with a white dot. So I'm using a Q-tip. Just one tooth. Yeah? Can I? Yeah, you can see it. Okay, and now I rotate the adjuster wheel one revolution back. One revolution is 10 clicks. One. Yep, there it's coming. And there it is again. Now I gotta rotate the inspection hole in front of this Allen screw down here. That's right here. And I gotta loosen it about one turn. Like this. 
and I gotta go around and hit it with a hammer to get that wedge to jump out. And I tighten the Allen screw with six to seven Newton meters. Too tight. Click, click. And then I remove the chips which Brembo left inside the brakes. Oh my god. The machining chips. Mm -hmm. The procedure on the brake disc is now complete. I just gotta close this hole here. Okay, better than nothing. And what's important is that these are still nicely greased up. Are they? Yeah. And we gotta find out what the torque is. Okay. Brake caliper wow. anchor blade to wheel knuckle bolt. 115. See, this corner is still clean on this rack. Oh my god. So, New parts. We gotta insert them. Oh. See, they fit nice because it's Brembo and not some Chinese crap. The old folks still do this. We are old folks. I know, that's why we're doing it. Oh my god. See, that's oh. Brembo. You buy something from the Italians, it just works. There, there. If I want to push this brake caliper now back into its home position, our fluid reservoir is completely full, so it's going to overflow. So we have to first extract some fluid out of it. Oh my god. So we need that syringe. And Christian was surprised, I remember. Are we going to put it back in now? No. We're not gonna put it back in. I'm not gonna climb on the car because it's waste. There we go. That's a lot, Christian. Oh. Yeah. And we push the brake caliper back. Careful not to damage the rubber. Mm. Yeah, it goes really easy. Copper grease on. Four. With Loctite on. There we go. Brake caliber to anchor blade bolts. 35. Now this was a long day and it's not over. 13 millimeters, 3 eighths. Yeah, it's, it's nicely not. moving this back in. This is not the first time I'm doing this and it never came loose. One side, we still have the other side to go. Yeah, the other side's easier. Why? Because we already know now how to do it and we have the tools all sitting here. And You heard the noise the parking brake makes when it engages. That's how it's supposed to sound. You know what I forgot? The cable. As usual. As long as you didn't forget the tie wrap. That was not nice. <laughs> so. It gotta be the wheel bearing. The axle. The axle. Got my new bit of play. It can't be down here because we replaced this today. So it's the wheel bearing. If it's the wheel bearing, you see it rocking right here between this part and this part. No. It's got play. It's not critical. I can feel it having play. We're gonna take that tire off. Okay. Oh, Did we forget to tighten the no. tool? Lay down and see what you see. No, this one doesn't have play. No, I don't see anything. Yeah. Took off the tie wrap. Oh no, forgot. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, now it's stuck. Stuck. Now I got it.
before sunset. <gasps> Oh my god. Mm. Fuse goes back in. Yes. Fluid level is good. Yeah, don't forget about the sensor. Sensor. So I always wanted to get a car where I have to climb up and down and that almost qualifies. Okay? <laughs> oh, in, in giraffe mode, super extended mode. That was Christian's fault. We gotta get in and we gotta do the bedding in procedure of the brake shoes. Oh my god, I don't even wanna know what that is. Yeah, okay, you have to apply the foot brake three times within 10 seconds and hold. Apply the electronic parking brake switch four times, followed by three release applications within 10 seconds. There must be some sort of a warning light coming on. Really? It so doesn't say so. Now I turn it on. One, two, Three, I hold it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and now here. Cycle active, okay? And now we gotta drive 35 kilometers an hour, and then I gotta stop the car using the brake switch. <laughs> yes, and I, I think we have to do that 10 times. Yeah, okay, watch it. 30 to 35, that's now, and I apply the brake switch. Oh yeah, it stops it. Okay, Something that was cycle number one. 30 kilometers an hour. Okay, Does release it, it. 10 repeated stops, oh my God. So now comes attempt number three. There we go, and release. Attempt number four. So I think we do the other ones off yes. camera. And that's it, oh, because no, this sick. farmer down there already thinks we're kind of crazy. <laughs> okay. Now, how do I get out of the bedding in procedure? I think all I got to do is drive faster than... You read. Warning, the electric parking brake service bedding in procedure mode will be active for the remainder of the ignition cycle or until the vehicle speed exceeds 50 kilometers an hour. Yeah, it's oh, still flashing. The lights stopped blinking, so okay. going over 50 kilometers an hour turns off the bedding in procedure mode. And this completes our rear brake job, okay? Yes. We got now new Brembo's, original Land Rover shoes, Brembo brake pads, and a little bit of hardware new, and we adjusted the parking brake, complete. Check out our rear electric park brake service video which we did about a year and a half ago around christmas yeah. that one we take the entire brake module out and we service it we replace some gears and the job is a little more complete if you are interested in our patch or in our sticker please drop vera an email yes if you like this video please give it a thumbs up think about subscribing and in any case don't unsubscribe and we thank our Patreons very, very much for their support. They make these videos possible. And we'll see you next Sunday. Wow, that was a one take. <laughs> so is your cell phone still working? Yes. What a mess. Looks like it's Saturday. Okay, so we interrupt my important work here with my chainsaw <laughs> to mount your wiper blade. The rear wiper blade is the most neglected part on my Discovery 3. And um, one of the reasons is because Christian said, I don't know where to get a new one. And I looked in the internet and after five minutes I had one. There's no rubber left. <laughs> yeah. Put it on and yeah. I can go back to the important book. Yeah, so Bosch rear wow. H403. I want one too. Cool. This is really nice. Do you remember how much it cost? Uh, I think 12 euros. I'm gonna go back to my chainsaw. Okay.